Okay, we got Cassandra's card pulled back at the shop here. Um, she's having problems making the back tires lock up. Now, I just took it for a quick boot around the yard here. And as you can tell from all the tracks I made, I was able to get both back tires to lock up on this type of ground. Now this is pretty solid. It's a little wet because we just had rain last night. But what my problem is, is I think that she cannot pull that pedal with enough force when she's in the ring. Sorry, pull that arm with enough force when she's in the ring. So my plan is, is we're going to try to take the power brake setup out of this car, which is another Sunfire, the one from Sutton. And we're going to modify it so that maybe the hydraulic brakes on this uh, off that car activate only the rear brake on this and rig it up to work off her handbrake setup. I've never done anything like this. I'm going to try it to see how it goes. Um, the only other problem that she has is she's bent one of her tie rods in the front. So we will pull that front end apart and then uh, see what's bent and hopefully try to straighten it and re reinforce it somehow. And then all of our attention will be put on the back end of this car, trying to make these back tires lock up more easier for her with less ease of use. So let's get the front end pulled up and see what's gone wrong there. I've been working on Cassandra's car today, and uh, this is what I've come up with. Um, a buddy of mine, Curtis, he just had the frame twist in one of his box cavaliers. So... I'm thinking about adding more support from one side of this car to the other side of this car. And it'd be very easy with this car because of how far the motor is back. And nothing's really starting to come out around my strut towers. But a buddy of mine, Sid, brought over his car and the strut towers were mangled on his. So I even might put something from strut tower to strut tower to help this car perform in a longevity. But... Um, what I thought what might have been a bent tie rod is not a bent tie rod, it's actually a bent strut. Now, I've done some quick measurements from uh, center to center on that uh, mountings plate right there. And I'm pretty sure I can have um, bubble cav struts fit into this car. I'll just have to drill new holes for them up here, which is fine. But I got lots of those now. Um... So that's that problem. Now the problem with the e-brake, I've been working on just about all day now. And I built this contraption here. That is a brake booster out of a 76 Mazda. Now I'm not running any power brakes here, so we're going to see how it's going to work. I have the brake lines already bent up. And I have the brake lines, the soft rubber flexible lines mounted through the floor now. So my buddy of mine borrowed my brake flaring kit so when I get that kit back tomorrow I'll double flare all these ends and I will see if I can bleed these brakes now how these work is I mounted this heim joint right here threaded a piece into it so it's got adjuster and then a new pin to actuate it so when you pull it it actually makes the brakes work so we'll see how this works. Now the car still runs and drives. I got it braced to the floor. I'll probably do this a lot better once I make sure it works. But hopefully that right there solves Cassandra's problem with the non-locking up back brakes. But the other option is to take this axle out completely and put a Cavalier rear axle in. Now I don't want to do that because this rear axle looks a lot more solid than a Cavalier rear axle. So we'll just see how this goes. Oh, look at that. A leaky brake line. Awesome. So, first glitch in the plan is right there. So, I guess we'll be doing more thinking about this afterwards. So, yeah, there you go. More brake lines to do, I guess.